Hello, my name is Charles Hadley King. I'm a senior research associate at George Washington University and technical lead for the BioCompute project. Today, I'm going to be discussing publication of BioCompute objects created from Galaxy workflow invocations. I'm gonna spend the first few minutes of this talk going through a few slides about the development of biocompute objects and the needs that biocompute objects fulfill. And then I'm going to do a demo of some recent in, uh, integrations we've submitted to the public Galaxy repository. BioCompute is a standardized template for reporting how a computational experiment was done and also includes why it was done. The original need for BioCompute arose from the United States regulatory agencies, specifically the Food and Drug Administration, but its application is far greater than just regulatory science. The standard reporting template supports fair data standards and encourages good data provenance. So it's something that we see as applicable to many other areas of science communication. In 2014, the Genomics Working Group at the US FDA convened a special session to discuss workflow communications, particularly as it pertains to NGS or sequencing data. They came away with four main aspects a solution should adhere to. The first is that it be human readable, like a GenBank sequence record. The second is that it also be machine readable, which means it has structured information, predefined fields, and associated meanings of value. Meaning everyone is explicitly clear on what every single field means. Uh, the solution should contain enough information to understand the computational pipeline, to interpret information contained therein, should be complete enough to serve as a record, and it should allow reproducible experiments. And then the final takeaway was that it should be immutable, meaning that we should have a way to ensure that information has not been altered since it was first created. Out of that meeting, BioCompute was born. Um, currently, it's an IEEE approved standard for communicating bioinformatic analysis workflows. So it does this by acting like an envelope for the entire pipeline. Um, it's essentially an aggregate of all of the information that one would need to understand a pipeline. Um, and in doing so, it also incorporates other standards. Um, it is human and machine readable. It is categorized by domains, which I'll get into in a little bit. It adheres to and encourages fair principles. It's also fully open source. Um, it's adaptable, preserves data provenance, and has a unique ID for versioning. BioCompute streamlines the reporting without enforcing any specific tool, platform, or workflow strategy. And the machine readability enables customized views and uh, development of other tools associated with the report. So here is a biocompute object 
color coded to highlight each of the different domains. There are eight different domains, five of which are required the provenance, list contribution, name, identifiers, date of creation. Description domain contains information to describe the pipeline, um, keywords, external references, um, pipeline steps, specific tools used. Error domain is where you can record sources of error. Um, parametric domain specifically lists each parameter that's been used in the workflow. Execution domain contains information that could be identifiers, date of creation. Description domain contains information to describe the pipeline, um, keywords, external references, um, pipeline steps, specific tools used. Error domain is where you can record sources of error. Um, parametric domain specifically lists each parameter that's been used in the workflow. Execution domain contains information that could be used for reproducibility, i.e. where a script is located, um, external data endpoints, so other resources that you need access to to execute the workflow. Um, the I.O. domain input output contains exactly that, your inputs and your outputs. Uh, the extension domain is for user defined fields that are either required or optional. Um, this is somewhere where you could insert your own defined fields to include additional information that might not that might not be present in the base biocompute. And then the usability domain, <clears throat> which we see as one of the most important aspects of the biocompute. That's where the scientific purpose of the analysis or computation is recorded. Um, you can, it's a free text field, so a creator can put in a description of what they're hoping to accomplish with the analysis. They can link out to other papers or previous um, studies or analyses. Just to review the key features of a biocompute object, it abstracts away workflow based on commonalities. So it's platform tool protocol independent. The usability domain being free text description and scientific purpose. Uh, data provenance, you have data manifests, track processes from beginning to end. You can track user attribution. So authored by, contributed by, reviewed by, so you know which person contributed what type of content to the object or the analyses. Um, there is what we call a verification kit. So in, with a full biocompute object, including an error domain and the IO domain, so the input and output files. This can give you a sanity check. Given a specific set of input files and the inherent or known error is the output of this analysis claims to have gotten valid. Biocomputes are extensible through the extension domain and fully open source. It was, Biocompute was part of um, the open source pilot program for IEEE. <clears throat> so it's uh, one of the first standards that they published that was fully open source. Over the development process, many different groups have helped with the development of Biocompute, bio both conceptually and technically. Um, few of them are listed here. Uh, probably about 400 or so different individuals have participated in one way or another um, in helping to develop the technical specification. So let's move on to the demo here. I have a instance of Galaxy, local instance running right now. 
this is based off of the code that we have on our biocompute fork of Galaxy at biocompute objects slash Galaxy. Um, currently, we have a pull onto the main development branch, um, possibly to be released in September for the 21.09 release of Galaxy. Um, but for the time being, you can either take it from our GitHub um, or you can run it at our Galaxy portal link here. Um, so hopefully everyone here is familiar with workflows and how they work in the Galaxy ecosystem. Um, we chose workflow invocations as the entry point for biocompute objects because uh, most of the information we needed to create a valid biocompute object was already obtainable in that uh, portion of the Galaxy code base. So I'm just going to show you to you know, construct a workflow. I have a pre-constructed workflow that I've, I've used. We're gonna run this workflow and select run workflow. And this is going to work here on my local machine. So it'll take a minute or two. Okay, so we're done. And you can see here um, in the particular run ID, we have options, an option for biocompute object. It's also available under workflow invocations. <clears throat> and you can see it from this same workflow a couple of times to test it out. So we'll go with the one that I just ran. Um, and in here, previously, I think the last year's GCC, we had integrated um, some uh, the ability to download a biocompute object. So, you know, that's still there. That parses the um, workflow and location and pulls out a good deal of information, but there's still a few pieces that. Um, you know, a user needs to input and they can't be pulled out automatically. Um, so to address that, uh, we've added a export field to this menu. Um, you simply fill out the URL for uh, BCO database API, um, give a specific user API key, select the table and the groups that you want to apply it to, and hit submit. Now, I'm going to come back to this in just a second. Um, in our biocompute portal, um, we aggregated all of the resources we have for biocompute objects. We have links to the Hive instance on AWS, our Galaxy instance, um, a page for different community organizations uh, associated with biocompute. Check those out. Um, we also have <clears throat> a page where we list all of the different resources and applications, um, our citations, I'm just going to sign in with my account. And you can see here a few objects listed. This is our beta version. So these are just test objects here. To submit an object from Galaxy, you need to acquire your API token. 
So once you have an account and once you've logged in, um, you'll see this biocompute object server section at the bottom. And you just copy the token here um, and put it into the form. And just to show, we have a few draft objects here. So I'll go back to Galaxy, hit submit. And then refresh this here. And you can see so a new object here, Galaxy Biocompute Object Development Test. So now I'm able to open the form here and you can see the information that came from Galaxy has been populated into this biocompute object. Um, now, to and the user can fill out the form here. Once the form is filled out and valid, you can select the server to publish it to, assign permissions to the associated groups, and publish draft. Now, we should see our Galaxy Biocompute object here in the Biocompute viewer. Um, and this is publicly accessible for anyone to see. As I'm showing you with the Chrome incognito tab right here, anyone can view this object. So So this work was done by myself. Abu King and Christopher Armstrong, the development lead for the Biocompute project, uh, contributed significantly to this. I'd also like to thank Dr. Jonathan Keeney, assistant research professor and the Biocompute lead, Dr. Raja Mazunder, my PI at George Washington University, and then Janisha Patel, the Biocompute Outreach lead.